Hey everybody, welcome to Always Bored Never Boring. Soon, Games Workshop is going to be releasing a game called Combat Arena. It's one of their special Barnes & Nobles exclusive type games that um, don't get a full international release and are basically designed to lure people into experiencing the Warhammer universes and learning a little bit more about them. It's interesting for two main reasons. One is it's uh, it's based in the 40k universe and features characters who are also going to be appearing in a forthcoming Blackstone Fortress expansion called Escalation. And as we know, I'm a massive fan of Blackstone Fortress, so um, it's going to be interesting to see those characters turn up in Blackstone Fortress. Um, but the other reason it's interesting is because um, it appears to be a reskin and reissue of a very good game that I own called Gore Chosen. Gore Chosen came out a few years ago, and it's really good fun. It's a combat skirmish game. So, with Combat Arena just around the corner, um, I thought it was a good time to take a little look at Gore Chosen. I have already actually reviewed this on my blog, alwaysboredneverboring.com, if you want um, to see my full thoughts on this really rather excellent game. Um, now, Obviously, Combat Arena may have a few differences. They may have tweaked the rules slightly. Um, I think they're, they're changing things slightly to cover the fact that the characters are using long-range weaponry a lot of the time rather than axes and hammers. But other than that, um, it looks like it's going to stay pretty close to what Gore Chosen is or, or was because Gore Chosen is no longer in production. Um, this is an out-of-production game. But I thought if we have a look at Gore Chosen, then um, maybe it might... Um, encourage you to take a look at Combat Arena. Um, so, what's Gore Chosen all about? Gore Chosen is actually a very small, compact combat skirmish game, but nobody seems to have let Gore Chosen know that because it has ramped all the dials up to 11. It is as metal as a skirmish game can get or a combat um, miniatures game can get. The general premise is that um, heroes of corn the gore chosen are in a big pit um, fighting to the death for the glory of the chaos god corn and that is it it doesn't get any deeper than that um, but the fluff in the book and the names of the characters and the actions you can perform and everything else it's just absolutely bonkers um, let's just read a few e Certs from the rule book just to give you an idea um, down here it says in battle the gore chosen carve a ruinous path of destruction through their enemies making even the mightiest champions appear as weakling children before them each screaming head hacked from a spurting neck of an enemy is another skull to be laid at the feet of corn another paving stone on their long road to damnation yeah it's pretty intense um but that's nothing check out the description of this special ability blood boil a churning burning agony erupts in your guts through the pain you hear heldrax call down corn's wrath blood bubbles and boils in your veins like molten brass dark bruises burst out under your skin as your organs weep gore until crimson rivers run from your eyes ears and mouth finally as the brutal torment consumes the last shreds of your sanity, you vomit forth a red geezer and your body explodes in a shower of glistening entrails and streaming blood. So, it's one for the kids. Get the whole family involved. So here is the arena itself, um, and this is probably my least favourite part of the game, um, the board itself. It's quite busy, it's very red, and it's a little bit difficult to figure out what's going on, because I'm colourblind, um, and this, 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 and this, they're special areas of the board, which actually have red lines around them to indicate that they are special locations. Um, and I can't really see those red lines, so I do have to rely entirely on the artwork to know where these things are. Um, but additionally, the, the lines don't indicate what 
the effect of the space is because this space this space and this space they're pits um, that you can fall into and die whereas this skull here is an obstruction which just means you can't move through it um, so it's different different elements but they're marked on the board in the same way um, the reverse of the board um, has a similar sort of thing going on but we have um, well, you can treat them as pits or pillars whichever you prefer for that particular combat just make a decision and stick with it um, they look like little sarlacc pits so here's your arena and there are four potential um, combatants there well there are four in the box and there are rules for four additional ones in the rule book and um, it's worth showing you this this is something you don't see often Check it out, a Games Workshop game with plastic inserts for your assembled miniatures. Um, the miniatures are your standard um, Core and Chaos heroes. So we have this chap here. Um, he has one or two skulls about his person. You may notice um, something of a trend with Games Workshop miniatures and the presence of skulls. Um, then we have this guy. with the ridiculous helmet. Um, you will notice mine aren't painted. I keep meaning to do it, and then I just never get round to it. I have so many things I want to paint. Yeah, big, big hammers and skulls and big axes are pretty much, it's what you're getting with this game. Look at that, relax. That's crazy. And he's standing on lots of skulls. So, oh, and by the way, if you have the um, the hero pack for Silver Tower, um, you can use these guys in Silver Tower as well as heroes. So those are your four characters. Um, at the start of the game, you pick a character. And this is what your character card will look like at the start of the game. So your character has a unique action. Um, your character has a kill zone, which indicates the spaces into which you can attack in this case if you're standing here you can attack the three hexes in your immediate front arc um, and then there's like a special bonus that you can get under certain conditions um, you have two tokens here which start off so you can see the healthy stuff here and as you take damage these will slide across so you can see the wounded information um, and then also you have a health bar down here so that's what it will look like. Let's have a little look at the card. Um, so here you have a unique action. And we'll talk about unique actions later. Um, but as you can see here, this is your, when you're given an opportunity to attack, this is your kill zone. So something has to be in your front arc. Um, and then if you're healthy, you roll um, you, uh, two plus to hit and every hit will inflict two wounds. And if you're injured, um, it's a three plus to hit and causes two wounds. Um, and then you've got this flurry of blows bonus here. It says if your target is directly in front of you, so in this middle hex, then you get to roll two extra dice if you're healthy or one extra dice if you're wounded. So that's how your characters um, are laid out. And the interesting thing is that you accumulate you don't just die in this game it's not a case of you take you take enough wounds and then you die it's a little bit more um, intricate than that and you will gradually be taken apart by your opponents um, as you take wounds your health tracker goes down as you would expect when it gets to the bottom you don't die what happens is is you place a wound token at the top of your health bar and your health bar resets and you carry on ticking down again. And if you get to the bottom again, then you put another wound on, another wound on, another wound on. And only at the point that you have filled up this bar with wounds do you actually die. However, every time you place a wound token on your chart, you also have to take a critical injury card. A little deck of these critical injury cards um, so you draw one of these and then you have to do what it says and some of them are just stupidly brutal for example headshot um, 
This one's really fun because it says your, the opponent who inflicted this injury rolls a dice for each injury marker on your fighter reference card. So if you've got five wound tokens here, he's going to roll five dice. If they score any sixes, you are gruesomely decapitated and that's it. You are dead. Game over. Bye bye. Out of the arena. I should point out, um, this game plays up to four people and it is a free for all. There's no team play. It's everyone for themselves. Um, and we'll get into it, but it works incredibly well, despite the fact that there is player elimination and despite the fact you would think that it would be situations where people would team up to kill other people. Um, it doesn't tend to happen all that often. People do tend to take their attacks of opportunity and spread the love damaging hit is one that will actually make you slide across one of your damage markers um, so if you take that injury you get to pick one of these tokens and slide it across and then from then on you have to take the wounded action instead of the healthy one and then again if another one gets slid across then you have to deal with the wounded side completely and that seriously hampers you for the rest of the game so that's how you're going to take wounds um, and deal with your characters slowly disintegrating under a flurry of horrific pummeling blows from axes and hammers so how do you go about inflicting all this damage on each other well the game plays in a number of rounds and at the start of the game um, you have this wrath chart and everybody's wrath level is set at three and the wrath level will indicate how much you can do in a given turn and as you take actions um, if you do particularly brutal things or take brutal damage your wrath goes up um, if you start playing cagely your wrath goes down and the number in your wrath chart indicates how many initiative cards you get um, you can have up to four initiative cards they have the character symbols on them and then what happens is, is everybody puts in a number of initiative cards equal to their wrath level, and then those cards get shuffled up. And this happens at the start of each round of the game. Um, and that forms um, an initiative deck, um, which determines the flow of the combat for the rest of the round. Because what happens is, is you flip over the top initiative card, and then whichever person um, has that particular character takes an action, and then you'd flip over another card and that person takes an action and you go on until the initiative deck has run out and then a new round begins where you put in initiative cards again based on your new wrath level and so on it goes. And on your turn, you're going to be using actions. Everybody starts um, with five actions in hand. Um, and every time an initiative card comes up, you can play one action or you can discard two action cards to use the unique ability on your character sheet, um, which is a super duper awesome ability. Um, but the action cards are very interesting because there's a lot going on with them. First of all, um, the card you play may have a wrath modifier on it, but note that the card is split into three. Um, and this wrath modifier doesn't apply to everything on the card, it only applies to whichever third of the card it's on. Um, in this case, um, the wrath goes down by two because a circling action, um, it's uh, uh, an action that keeps you out of combat and keeps you sort of um, moving around your opponents rather than engaging them. So obviously you have a breather, it gives you a chance to calm down and rethink what you're doing. So your wrath goes down, it makes perfect sense. But when you play um, an action card, you can pick one of the three things to do. Um, you have a movement option, you have a strike option, uh, and you have a, pa um, a special option. Um, and all the cards are different, they all do different stuff. It's really interesting. Um, for example, you could use this card to do the circle maneuver, um, which allows you to move up to four spaces. Um, and when you finish your movement, you can face in any direction. That's what that little symbol means. Um, however, there is a special rule that says you cannot move into any hexes that are adjacent to another fighter because it's a more defensive uh, posture that you're taking. Um, if you don't want to do that, you can make an attack. You can make an attack roll in two dice. But of course, in order to do that, um, you have to have a target in your um, killing arc, your kill zone, as specified on your character card. Or you can use the card for a special ability. In this case, you've got parry, um, which is actually a card that you play as an interrupt after an attack against you. Um, it gives you an option to negate the damage. So those are cards you might want to hold on to rather than using the ability. Um, here's another example. We've got um, the move ability is a run. It only allows you to move three spaces um, 
but this symbol here means that when you finish your movement, you have to face directly away from the last space you left. Um, you have a kick option here and you have misdirect. And this is a fun, fun ability that says pick an adjacent fighter, choose a new facing for that fighter. So you can spin them around, set them up to stab them in the back on a later turn or something. Um, or, you know, make a, a temporary alliance with a friend. So you can turn someone around so they're facing the wrong way and someone else can stab them in the back for you. Um, and so we've got another one here with run we've got desperate swing which puts your wrath up it's kind of like a, a weak attack but you get a wrath bonus for trying it um, and we have the ability duck under pick an adjacent fighter and swap places with them both fighters keep their facing so there's lots of really interesting maneuvering that you can do around the board um, getting yourself into position it's not just about charging up to someone and hacking at them until they die um, there's a lot of swapping places changing your facing ducking back um, getting into the right range for a special attack charging in um, so there's there's a lot of interesting things going on um, especially as well it's worth noting um, that there are pits on the board and there are instances where you have the option to push someone and if you push them they get a chance to not fall in the pit um, where they roll a dice and then they can discard additional cards from their hand to increase the value of the dice roll um, but if they don't roll four or more they fall in the pit and instantly die so there is a lot of instant death in this game um which is good. It's a good thing. It's kind of how the game should be. It should be violent and lots of instant death. And it does make you feel constantly on your toes. You never feel like, oh, I'll just stand in front of this pit just this round, but I can quickly move out. Um, it does. It keeps the pressure on. And that pressure, um, even after you're dead, you still get to apply it. Um, and this is one of the interesting things about this game is that on the back of your character card, if you die, you sw swap it over to the fate of the slain side. Um, and now, whenever one of your initiative cards turns up, you roll on this chart, and it, whatever the result is, it gives you a chance to do things to the players who are left. So if somebody has bullied you and pushed you in a pit really early on in the game, for the rest of the game, you can bully them from beyond the grave. Um, and what that does is it means that people don't tend to just pick on one person to kill them um, because uh, and certainly not to try and wipe them out too quickly because some of these things that can be done are horrible um, and you can imagine having that happen to you for the whole length of the game um, it can really ruin your chances of winning so you do tend to want to spread your hits around a little bit more it's a really interesting mechanism for making sure um, people don't just bully someone into submission very early on it's very very clever and that's basically it that's gore chosen that's how it works um each round you you look at your wrath level you put in your initiative cards to create your initiative deck you flip your the initiative deck one at a time whoever is next takes an action from their hand if they've got action cards left if they don't have any action cards left they can't do anything um you move around you dance around each other you make little passing runs at each other um, if you suddenly get an opportunity to do a big hit you might do it um, at the end of the round um, you, you do the whole thing again and you keep on until there is only one person left standing in the arena and it's really quick um, so even though, and like I say even though there's player elimination um, you kind of still in the game as uh, with because you get that option to to tackle people from beyond the grave by rolling the dice and doing whatever that that dice says um and the games themselves are very quick anyway um 45 minutes to do the whole game so you never feel like you're left out of it for too long and in all honesty um while i'm not a big fan of player elimination in general um for this game it just feels right it kind of works and it's not a game where you're going to feel really bad if you get killed quite early on. You're more than likely just going to laugh about it and then, you know, start throwing stones at the people who are left and causing as much much trouble as possible. 
And that's it. I don't think there's anything else that I, I need to add at this point. That's how Gore Chosen works. And like I say, Combat Arena looks very similar. It's got a lot of the same, um, the layout of the cards and things like that. So I should imagine a lot of the, the core mechanisms are going to be very similar. Um, and it's going to be interesting to see. But that is it from me. I hope you found this interesting. Um, as always, please leave your comments and queries below. I do my best to respond to everybody. Um, and please like the video if you liked it. And hopefully I will see you all again very soon. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye.